I hope you enjoyed the Sabbath school this morning. All those who did not enjoy the Sabbath school, please put up your hand. Nobody would dare to do it, would they? I hope you enjoyed the church service, divine service time today. All those who enjoyed divine service, please put up your hand. Very good. That's a marvellous show. We've had a very good time. All those who enjoyed eating the very healthy things at lunchtime today, please put up your hands. All those who enjoyed eating anything that was there today, please put up your hands. The same people put up their hands. Look at that. So we know what you had for lunch. Well, the day is not over. There's a very special program this afternoon. We're glad that you've come uh, back again after lunch to enjoy the program, uh, to enjoy the fellowship together, and uh, that uh, you will, in your heart, add a blessing to Frank and Lynn. And uh, it's our prayer, of course, today that their ministry will continue to be a great blessing to everybody. And so we make you welcome to the afternoon program. We invite you to bow in prayer because we want to ask the Lord's special blessing upon this afternoon. Shall we bow our heads? You may kneel if you wish to. Our gracious Heavenly Father, your mercies have been shown to us again today. We've been able to enjoy the fellowship together that uh, is unique in that it is Christian, that it honours your name, that we... Uh, uh, respect each other and uh, that as uh, we fellowship together we are in oneness of spirit. Only your spirit can cause that to happen uh, amongst a group of people, all of us who are so different but today we are so much the same. And uh, we rest again in your grace this afternoon thanking you for your mercies, for the forgiveness of our sins thanking you that you've made it possible for us to have the hope of salvation, to have the certainty of a place in your kingdom. We pray that as we proceed with the program today that we'll all be blessed. And uh, we pray that as we uh, sing, as we pray, as we hear your word, as we uh, offer thanks and as we congratulate that it will all be done in the spirit of Jesus Christ. So we pray that you will be with us, inspire us, help us to enjoy this time together, that it might be a memorial hour spent together with you. We pray it, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to invite the Latai, Latai and family to come forward for your special music right now. Thank you very much. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship
This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship. you ladies for that song of surrender and commitment a very appropriate song for this afternoon's service as we gather for the ordination of Frank Tor. is there a chance uh, Lou of getting that uh, photograph that I can see on the back wall up on the screen here so that everybody else can see now isn't that a good looking man you may not have heard me say this, but I've been going around telling everybody that the poster boy for the CHIP program is Frank Tor, and now you can see why. And we're here this afternoon to celebrate his life and ministry together with Lynn, and we just are so happy today. And as we uh, look forward to the message that Pastor Ben will present and the ordination with Pastor Jerry, and also as Pastor Lyle challenges you this afternoon, that each one of us will be renewed in our commitment of service to God. I'd like to invite Bueller and Reuben, if they could come forward and continue our celebration. Just before we start, it's, it's a very special person that um, steps forward to take up the challenge of working in the field of uh, the work for God. And as the song previously told you, it is a desire that comes from within us. And we, in our song, it's a desire that we've known Frank for over, I don't know, 15, 20 years maybe, <laughs> since, long, uh, since Avondale. And it was a desire in his heart way back then. To, um, to be where he is today. <clears throat> it's my desire to live for Jesus It's my desire To live just like Him Often I failed Him Brought Him much shame It's my desire 
to live for Him. It's my desire to help someone today, someone who may have failed to see the way. I too was once so lost, but I found my way to God. It's my desire to live for Him. If you could see where Jesus brought us from to where we are today then you would know the reasons why I love him so you can take the world its wealth and riches for I don't need as power. It's my desire to live for Him. If you could see where Jesus brought you from, to where you are today then we would know the reasons why you love him so you can take the world its wealth and riches for you don't need earth's powers it's your desire it's my desire it's my desire to live just like him It's been over 20 years now since I first met Frank in the bakehouse at the sanitarium factory in Kurenbong. I was just starting at Avondale College and uh, we became great friends with Frank and Lynn. And then from Avondale College we went directly to Whanganui, Frank and Lynn's hometown. And the church down there remembered Frank very well, Frank and Lynn, as committed to the church, very involved, very enthusiastic. And I'm glad this afternoon as I look out, I can see that um, Roger Marshall is here. And Roger, this isn't on the program, but I just wonder whether you want to take a, just a couple of moments to come and just share a little bit about that early experience uh, with uh, the Tor family down there. Because I understand you were very much involved with them. I'm not very good at speaking, especially impromptuly. It's certainly a privilege to be here this afternoon. And uh, I guess if I wanted to give you a message this afternoon, is that if you are studying with people in their homes and they try and put you off, 
just remember the word persistence. Because who knows what a Duquesne projector is? Okay. Well, this was uh, my instrument. And we went through the studies. I don't know, was it 24 or lessons? And uh, nothing seemed to be happening. So we started the series a second time. And of course, was it a Monday night or a Tuesday night that I would go? And every now and again, I'd get this phone call which would say, oh, you can't come tonight. And uh, so anyway, uh, I'd say, well, that's okay. I'll come next week. So, of course, I would uh, ring up and say, well, I'm, I'm coming. And they'd say, okay, you better come. So I'd come again. And uh, this happened a number of times, but uh, I, I kept up uh, ringing them and, and coming along. And then, of course, I got to the end uh, of two lots of Duquesne series. And being a, an experienced uh, person at this, I uh, called on the local pastor, Pastor Gilbert Diaz, and I said, you better go along and see Frank and Lynn and see if you can't pull them over the line because I'm not really having too much success. And so he went around and with his skills he, uh, he managed to do just that and that was great. But there's, there's an interesting story I'd like to tell you and I hope they don't mind, is that Pastor Diaz said, well, we'd like you to start attending church. And it just shows you the type of people they are. They said, well, we can't come straight away. And, of course, when you hear those sort of things, you get a bit concerned. And uh, I think it was Lynn. She was coaching a netball team, and she'd made a commitment to this team for the season. But they said, once netball's over, we'll come. So we waited, and we waited, and netball finished, and the towers came. And the towers kept coming every week, and they got fully involved in church. And then about 12 months later, I heard that Frank and Lynn were going to Avondale and Frank was going to study for the ministry. And I honestly could not believe it. I was blown away. But anyway, here we are today. He's been a successful minister and now he's being ordained. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless uh, Frank and Lynn and their family as they serve in this area. Thank you, Roger. In the life and experience of every person who is truly called by God to be a pastor, a leader of his church, there comes a, a very specific impression by the Holy Spirit to devote one's life, one's very best energies to the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Frank, you did not take too long to, uh, to devote yourself to this task early in your Christian journey, making the decision to transfer to Avondale a, f a few short years after baptism. And when you got there, Frank and Lynn, you didn't rush through it like so many of the rest of us did. You took every opportunity to make the most of what you could learn and experience while you were there. And this is one of the things about Frank that I think many of us will appreciate and, and recognise. He's one of those steady-as-you-go type of people. Steady-as-you-go. And that's what it was like as you took a very active role of support and of ministry up there mainly, well, in a lot of the churches in that uh, area, but I guess mainly Cessnock Church. And, you know, for a number of years, I thought perhaps, and I guess there were many of us who thought perhaps that you were not coming back to New Zealand, that uh, you were going to end up being one of those good old Aussie blokes. <laughs> you know, we were so glad to hear the news that you had accepted the call that uh, Pastor Jerry gave to come back and minister in New Zealand. It's been great. We believe, and our impression is that you've been fulfilling a sound and God-anointed ministry in the north, up in Te Kao, Kaio, Kaitaia, and Kaikohe. 
And it's so good to see you here today, Frank and Lynn, with your son, Raniera, with your church community, and many others who have come to support you and to be present for this very unique event. And Frank, today by... Your, your church community, including us at the conference and union level, are here by the sanction of God to acknowledge and affirm through ordination your call to the gospel ministry. And it's a privilege for us to share this occasion with you. We praise God that we can do this, don't we? Celebrate your call to ministry. And along with that, through the laying on of hands and prayer of consecration, your own amen and acceptance of God's call. Just a quick snapshot of that uh, photo. We'll come back to it shortly. The scripture says, You who bring good tidings to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is an imperative of the gospel. Its application was in the first instant to the promised one of Israel. The Messiah of God who would come and fulfill God's promise given to Adam and Eve. The Lord Jesus Christ himself. But it's a reminder. It's an instruction to every minister, to every person called by God to carry the good news. And there's so much that comes out of the, these texts, but I just want to take a couple of moments to reflect on, a, on two or three points. Firstly, it refers to the bearer of the good news, which is what you are as a minister of the gospel. A minister of the good news of Jesus Christ. You are commissioned by God for this task. You are his messenger and as such a leader among people. As a leader and messenger of God's gospel, you do have something to say. You do have authority to point Jesus up, to point people upward, to focus them upward on Jesus. The world we're living in is changing day by day. Every day it's changing. Human life and its problems often are more complex, more subtle, more brazen, more stressful. But the divine solution remains the same. Here is your God. His wisdom, His power, His authority, His grace have a telling impact for every person for every community, for every situation, and every circumstance. May you never forget this, Frank. May it feature as a centerpiece in your work and service. I think there will be times of temptation when you might be tempted not to say what needs to be said. Pressure to do something other than bringing the gospel to bear on the issues and situations Certainly tact and discretion is needed, but never forget who gives you the authority to speak up and to speak out. It is God himself. Lift up your voice. Don't be afraid, for the message must be heard. Here is your God. Speak boldly and courageously for Jesus, because the next point that comes out of this 
is that the message is all about him. It's all about Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. God revealed in person. Lord and ruler. Not only that, he is coming, he is returning in righteousness, bringing justice. But particularly, he comes bringing his rewards with him. His rewards for the faithful. And thirdly, the scripture highlights the relational aspects and points out that it is a pastoral ministry that you perform. And so equally important, Frank, is not only that you are pointing people to Jesus, but that you yourself emulate Jesus. That in your service you represent Jesus, that you are like Jesus. To put it simply, love people. I know you do that. But keep doing it. Keep loving. Keep listening. Keep caring. Your work includes teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness from God's word, certainly. It includes the equipping of God's people for, for the work of ministry. But what you do and what you say happens in the context of relationships, of personal care, of having the utmost regard for the person, just as Jesus did for each of us. It's not always easy, is it? Because I think every now and then, perhaps, the flock might behave like they've caught rabies and it puts the shepherd in a very difficult place. But it's important to remember the main point of God's purpose and claim on human life is built on love. Love. Just look at the verbs for a moment. The verbs in this verse, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers. He carries them close to his heart. He gently leads. These verbs and contexts are an expression of care, of concern, of the real love that God has for people. It's love and action. So may your ministry be like this. When you lift up your voice and say, here is your God, you're inviting people to catch a glimpse, to experience the reality of God's character of love, to know the strength of his power, his righteousness, his judgment is the outworking of his love for all of us and for all of them out there. My friends, Frank and Lynn, he's got your life in his hands. He has your continuing ministry in his hands. Keep trusting in God. As we heard in, the, in our study this morning, God trusts in us. And he's entrusted to you this ministry. Keep trusting in him. Keep trusting in God to sustain your life. To sustain your family. To keep you through all of the difficult times you encounter as you walk the life of ministry. Trust God and love people. Tell them, here is your God through your example. Show them what God is like, how God acts, how God cares for the people that he loves and sacrificed himself for. We love you, Frank. You're a great guy. Your people love you. And we certainly affirm you today. We thank God for you. And we pray God's blessing upon you and Lynn, your family, and your ministry. Amen. One of the great things that our church has taken on board are some of the, we could say, ceremonies that um, as we moved from an Old Testament into a, into a New Testament uh, phase, that uh, in the Old Testament God's people came together for special occasions, for special events, 
and uh, truly celebrated that oneness and that experience with God. And uh, of course we don't have those festivals anymore on those occasions but uh, God has given to us something very special in baptism, in our communion services that we have and uh, what we are doing today is an ordination service. Another one of those very special occasions and each of these in their own way help to remind us that in the busy world in which we live today the activities of everything around us can so easily blot out the presence and the awareness of God and we come to these occasions as a time to to pause a time to reflect but also a time in the very weakness of our humanity Ellen White speaks of the one qualification that we have to come to God and that is our need and it's occasions like this when we uh, send shall we say uh, a, a husband and wife today on the the journey that is going to consume them for the rest of their life that we realize that we need something outside of ourself and that's the anointing of the spirit of the living God and so we have come to that time now when uh, we are going to kneel here together and by the laying on of hands seek in a very personal way God's special blessing uh, upon this couple and so we would invite you Frank and Lynn to uh, come come forward uh, up here and uh, we would also uh, invite uh, all the ordained uh, pastoral staff that we have with us today if you would all like to come forward uh, for this very special occasion thank you Don't be worried, folks. We're not going to lay hands on Lynn, but she's here beside him. <laughs> I, said, I said that money for Lynn's benefit because I could see her face. So. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, loving and gracious Father in heaven, Lord, today we come to you as the all-wise, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present God. We come, Father, because of a, a confidence that has come as we've walked this journey down through the valleys and up over the mountain tops, where we've sensed your power and your peace and your presence with us. And Lord, the journey for Frank and Lynn has been uh, one, as Ben has said, it's been uh, a journey where they have been persistent. It's been a journey, Father, where they have many times reached out their hand and placed it in the hand of their God because they lack that human strength. It's been a journey, Father, of discovery. It's been a journey of knowing of the excitement of waking on a new day and seeing what God has on the agenda for that day. Father, today we come obedient to your word. We come, Lord, to lay hands upon Frank, to seek the infilling, empowering of your Holy Spirit in every way and form. May, Lord, you fill every nook and cranny of his heart and life. 
and as he and Lynn journey together to seek and to save those who are lost, Lord, that they will do so in the mighty power of their God. So, Father, we commit them totally to you and pray for Frank's ministry today that it will always bring honour and glory to you and only eternity, Father, will reveal the fullness of you working through his life. In Jesus' very precious name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite the Kaikoya Church, if they could come forward now, please. may be looking a bit bewildered family because we didn't know as a church we we're going to be doing an item so I gave a quick look around and uh, just lip the song that we're going to sing <coughs> those of you who didn't read my lips it's he's able oh. and <coughs> praise the Lord in saying that uh, Frank the Lord's brought you this far Amen. and he's going to take you all the way he's able to do that so may the Lord bless you and learn in your ministry. Church, well organized. <laughs> it's a privilege to have Pastor Ken here today as part of the service, particularly for me because he was at my ordination. 
and also to have Pastor Lyle Heiss here, who was a pastor in the Wellington area when I was a high school student. And uh, he is currently uh, Dr. Lyle Heiss and a lecturer at Avondale College and also the uh, leader of our Worship Institute. And as you know, has a gift for music and has been a blessing to our church, not only in this division, but around the world. And uh, we couldn't uh, miss out the opportunity of having him as part of the service today. And also that uh, he and Gaylene know Frank and Lynn as well. So thank you for being here today. Frank and Lynn, I've got a really scary thing to do here. It says that I have to charge you. And I'm not sure whether that means I have to make a big bill that you have to pay me. I'm not sure if it means that I'm a soldier and we've got to go to war. And if that's the case, I'm bound to lose because you're a Maori warrior and I'm just a Pākehā and that's all over. So, so what I thought would do, I would do after having a little bit of fun with that is to, to try and see if we can change some images and some symbols here for a moment. And I need some of my friends in the congregation to help me with this. And, um, and I think it might help us get past this word, which is a fairly old-fashioned word in a way, but which has given me an excuse to say some things to you that I really want to say. I love the fact that Pastor Jerry gave us a bit of a reminder about the Old Testament and, uh, and then talked about how in the New Testament things were a bit different. So I'd like to pick up on that theme and, and mention a few really important things. In the Old Testament, the model about how people looked after other people spiritually was the model that we call priest. And we're all pretty familiar with that model. And there are still denominations today that use that word. And it's a rich and a precious word. And the New Testament doesn't do away with the word, but it really changes its meaning. And when we get to the New Testament, the writers say, you love those images of priests. Well, here's the good news. Every last person in the Christian family is a priest. And it would be really sad if we left this service today without reminding ourselves about that because that means that every last person here is really involved in this service. And they're involved in it because they're priests. That's what the Bible tells me. But the New Testament realised that we could all be priests, but the family might get a little bit ragged if, if we didn't, in fact, have some way of organising it. And it came up with a wonderful image. And in our tradition, this charge image is a bit like a warrior image. And I'm trying to move past that because I'm really scared that I would lose in any interaction like that. And I'd like to suggest another image for what's happening for you today. You see, the New Testament says everyone's a priest. And then it goes further and says everyone has gifts. And it lists them all. You know them. Heaps and heaps of gifts and everyone. Everyone here today has at least one, probably several of those gifts. But how is the work of God going to carry on unless we've got someone, and here's my really critical word, unless we've got someone who is a coach to help them really express their gifts. And that's what you are, Frank, and then you can both be this coach. And I like it a bit better than the charge image and the warrior image. It's a bit more at the heart of what I think the gospel is about. So what... Jesus is saying to you, and in my halting way I'm trying to say as well, is to tell you that I believe that you're called to be a coach and that means looking around over all the people and finding out what their gifts are and then sidling up beside them and saying, you can be a fantastic priest for Jesus if you know how to use that gift. I'll help you. That's your job. And the great thing is that this doesn't actually create a different status for us. 
This doesn't mean that somebody gets to lord it over anybody else. This means that gifted priests and coaches, we're all in this together. And there are people in our congregation who really understand that because they're doing that already. And I wanted to recognise them and affirm them and get them, in fact, probably to come up the front here and join us. I'd like all my... Th these people are all coaches. They're going to come down here now. We'll get you and Lynn to stand up again. But what about that? Coaches, come down here. Now, there's some coaches out in the, in the congregation too. And coaches are anyone who's doing this full time. Anyone who does this full time is in fact a coach. And there are some of some we've seen some of them. We have Paul here, but we have some other coaches out here. We really need to see them. We have Kendra and Kylie and Sarah, at least, who I know who are they're in full time ministry and they're coaches. And they really understand. In a way, it would be remiss of us not to gather around you and say, we really want you to take away the courage that you need to be a coach. And these people are all coaches. And they're really here to support and encourage you. And here's the thing. We, we want to tell you just something about what sometimes happens in the world of coaching in sports. In the world of sports, if a coach doesn't do too good a job for the all-black team, you know what's about to happen. Sort of not too long left for the coach. Here's the great news, Frank and Lynn. In, when you coach for Jesus, you see, Jesus takes the long view. And these people all know about coaching and they know about the fact that sometimes it's just plain hard work and sometimes you feel as though you haven't actually made any progress at all. But here's the great news. Jesus has promised to be with you all the way. He's not there with his stopwatch out and the performance stats and saying, hmm, uh, the Seventh-day Adventist All Blacks under Frank's and Lynn's coaching didn't do too good. Maybe we should fire them. No, Jesus has promised to be with you through his spirit to say, hang on, brother, even when the going gets tough. Hang on, sister, even when you feel as though lots of people aren't real sure about your husband and may maybe think that he maybe should go somewhere else or that he's not effective. And that really cuts to the heart. Here's the good news. Jesus says, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. That's the best news any coach could get. So what I thought I would love to do, we've, uh, we've begun this ceremony, but I just felt like doing it again. And that was for, for all the coaches to really grip your hand and encourage you and say, we're with you, we understand, we know the fantastic joy when, 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 when your team wins, obviously wins. And there's some great ways in church like life when you obviously win. You win every time you baptise someone. You win every time you conduct a Christian marriage. Strangely, you even win when through the pain of a funeral you point people to the hope of everlasting life. But sometimes you feel that you lose. You lose if a teenager loses their way. You feel like you lose if somebody turns their heart away from Jesus. But we're here to encourage you, to shake your hand and to tell you with Jesus you're not going to fail. And he has a crown of life that he wants to give you. He wants you to... to Get the feel of it even now, the crease in your brow with that crown just about there. And when he comes again, a glorious crown that never fades away. So we want to encourage you both. We want to, again, once more to shake your hand, to wrap our arms around you as God's latest and God's really triumphant coach. God bless you.
Frank, in the program, it says that uh, you uh, are about to share with us a testimony, but before you do that, I have your ordination certificate, which I am very privileged to be able to uh, present to you today, and I will read what it says. Uh, says here, Frank Tor, having given satisfactory evidence of his call to and preparation for the sacred work of the gospel ministry, was ordained at Whangarei, New Zealand on the 13th day of June 2009 and is duly authorised under the provisions of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to perform all the functions of the ministerial, ministerial, ministerial office. And so, with God's blessings, I present this to you today. And we also have some gifts for you uh, today because this is a celebration day and, a, and, a, and an acknowledge, acknowledgement of God's blessings on your life. So God bless you. through. And Lynn, if you want to say something. I'll let her say something first. Eh? <laughs> you love me? <laughs> wow. First of all, Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, just a second, I'm getting prepared. Just thank you for coming in, um, supporting us. <sighs> Big breath now. This is a very touching moment. It's really. Mm. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> it's been a long, long journey. Like they say, they most of know us for over 20 years. <coughs> That's because one of us has got no taringas and it's taken us that long to sort out ourselves and our children. And the Lord has been very, very patient and uh, very loving. Yes, I have a nice husband, quietly. <laughs> we don't want to tell him too much because it goes to <laughs> And But, um, yes, all I can say is um, praise the Lord. Well, that's saying a lot too. And um, thank you for where we are today. Thank you for friends. Thank you for church family. Thank you for my son who's trying to hide behind the seat. And um, just thank you for this. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Give us a kiss. Oh, my. <laughs> Uh, kia ora no tātou whānau. It's, a, it's a wonderful privilege to be here. I want to thank every one of you. Um, but most importantly of all, I'd like to thank our team here. And uh, without a good team behind you, it's very difficult to go anywhere. And so I'd like to thank Pastor Eddie and uh, Pastor Jerry uh, for their leadership. I, uh, I have some special um, times with these guys. And it's good to know that I have good friends there. I also want to thank um, Pastor Ben. And um, I was a little bit worried there for a minute. He might have sort of ran away with a couple of stories there. And um, so I sort of hung my head down a wee bit. But uh, praise the Lord, you know. God is good, isn't he? And, uh, of course, um, Pastor Curtis... Um, it's been good to, to know that um, coming into the ministry with an experienced minister is wonderful to have. So thank you very much, Pastor Ken. And uh, also for Pastor Heiss. Um, Pastor Heiss was uh, the minister of the college church when we were there. And it, it was wonderful to serve under him as one of the student um, elders as well. 
And so, Pastor Heist, thank you very much for being here today, for making our day a special day. Um, thank you, guys, for being here. Without you, where would our ministry be? Uh, that's something that we've learned, and so um, it's wonderful to have you here as uh, our supporters. But most of all, I'd like to thank my wife uh, for just being pretty. And, uh, <laughs> I always think of the day that when, when I had no girlfriend and, you know, when a very sad young boy without a girlfriend and I used to say, look up to the stars and I used to say to the falling star, I wish. <laughs> and when I met my wife, I thought maybe that star was right. <laughs> but I thank God that God had given to me a, a relationship, a wonderful relationship with my wife. And uh, obviously those of us who are married understand what I'm talking about when um, our wives play a major role in where we are today. So thank you very much, my dear, for giving me wonderful years of joy. And, uh, <laughs> but God has been wonderful. I thank Roger. Where's Roger? Oh, here he is. And uh, for a moment there, I thought he was going to give away a couple of secrets too. But um, Roger, I thank God that, um, you know, as a Bible worker, you hung in there. And um, if it wasn't for that resolve that um, Jesus has said to you, go and chase that Maori boy up and get him out of those pubs and uh, make sure that he looks at that old rusty Duquesne. <laughs> two sessions that we had, two, two um, series that we went through to Duquesne. I thank God for you, um, Roger. Because, um, you know, for men like you, women like, like you, who have a heart for people. And um, without that, you know, that dedication and that loyalty to Jesus Christ, where would you and I be today? And so thank you very much. And I know every one of you here ha has a ministry, and that ministry is to lead people to Jesus Christ. And um, I thank God for leading me to where I am today. It's been a hard road. been over 20 years since the day that I accepted Jesus Christ. And um, I'm so glad that um, the times that I left Jesus Christ was the times that he was right there by my side. And so today it's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful celebration to be here. Um, ordination, I guess, I've never been ordained before, so I couldn't compare. But um, it's been a wonderful, um, <laughs> it's been a wonderful time for me because I guess it's Jesus right here beside me saying, Frank, you have a long journey to go yet, and I'm just so glad that God had chosen me as a special person to bring the gospel to His people. I look around and I see um, my family from Tekal, and. Um, Buell and Reuben and, I, and us go back 20 odd years and uh, with, um, with Ted and um, so I thank my family from Tekal, I thank my family from Kaitaia and um, been a couple of hoey rows there and uh, same as um, Kaio, God has been wonderful and given me a great ministry and I know that my ministry is not finished yet, today is only just the beginning of, of my ministry. And I want to thank everybody involved in bringing me and leading me to this position at the moment. Uh, thank you very much, family. Beg your pardon? <coughs> One good thing I love about ministry, God supplies secretaries. He supplies um, treasurers. And, you know, most times they're in your household. <laughs> and I just wasn't quite sure what... Kaiko here. Yeah, that's my church. That's right. <laughs> She's just saying, guys, thank you very much, Kaiko, here as well. And I didn't forget you. It's just that you right there with me, and I just thought that um, I forgot you. Sorry. <laughs> so thanks very much, and um, praise God for this wonderful day. And um, you know what I really like to see? All these young people that are here. One day I'd love to see you up here. That's what I like to see. That's my dream and that's my, my vision is to see a lot of young people up here in the ministry. 
Um, and the other thing I like to see is every one of you to be a chipper. Yeah. You know, if I can chip away, and if you hadn't understood 20 years ago what I used to do, you'd really realize how good chip is. And um, praise God that he is a wonderful God, eh? Thank you, Frank and Lynn. It's good you stopped there. You're just getting yourself into trouble. <laughs> and then you're starting to preach. So, uh, no, kia ora. Thank you. Micah Pehikuru, come forward, brother. He's just a wincing. Speaking of Chip, uh, Pastor Frank doesn't have his toko toko anymore. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. Um, I'm not really supposed to be up here. I just, um, I'm just introducing our ladies who have got something to give. Unfortunately, Lynn, we didn't have any puha in the garden. We see you've got a, a lot of flowers there, and we tried to hunt for some. <laughs> we tried to hunt for some watercress and some and some puha to make you a nice, beautiful, edible, chippable um, bouquet. <laughs> um, and um, you know, uh, I knew this young man from from uh, from three years ago, <laughs> and uh, he's my neighbour. So uh, it makes it easy when you're supposed to witness to your neighbour because he's my neighbour. Well, I can tick that one off the list. Uh, but it's, it's been a pleasure to know um, Frank and Lynn and uh, Raniera. And um, if uh, Brother Robbie was alive today, I can just hear him saying, well, boy, it's about time. It's about time. And uh, we look forward to the day where we see our loved ones who have passed on before us. Um, and we will be able to celebrate um, that time. Uh, uh, Lynn, thank you for, um, you know, everybody uh, addresses, um, addresses the mail. And I'd just like to switch that on its end and, and address you. Thank you for putting up with Frank for all these many, many years. <laughs> My wife uh, nudged me in the side down the back there. But, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome when you have a, um, a faithful wife um, who has a heart for souls. And so we thank you, Lynn, for your ministry here. And we thank you too, uh, Brother Frank, uh, because as a team, you too, you know, it's, it's a challenge to come into the heart of Ngāpuhi, where they still make jokes about how we have people around for dinner. <laughs> and when we, you see, the previous minister that we had, everyone will always, I suppose, try and measure you according to the last one. Is he as good as the last one? Or I hope he's not as bad as the last one. <laughs> but inevitably, I suppose, people will tend to... Uh, to, to and so we heard, we heard that, uh, that Frank was coming and we knew that he was um, not of Ngāpuhi descent. But of course, we all know that um, um, everyone... Whakapapa is back to Ngāpuhi. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a Māori whakatau that goes... Um, um, which means Jesus is, uh, is, the, is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, and Kaikohe is the base. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, been, it's been wonderful having you with us, Frank and Lynn, and we know that um, you know we've come to love. Um, Jesus loves you, and so do we. Ladies, could you come down and, 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 um, and could we have um, 
Frank and Lynn come up and we've got a, there's a little something. Just a minute. I'll say that. <laughs> <coughs> I just told our sister Hockey. Now, the flowers will go to Frank and the clock to Lynn, and then, oh, oh, sorry, mistake, swap. It's the other way around. But however, she gave it to the right guy. She, she's a bit shy. But, um, oh, well, Lana's not shy. But anyway, um, but I want my sheet back, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it off. Oh. You all want to know what it is? Okay. It, it's a clock, but we <laughs> we didn't want to make it seem as though they're never on time. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a clock. <laughs> it says to Pastor Frank and Lynn Tor, choose you this day whom you will serve. Hey, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Love from your church family in Northland, Te Kao Kaikohe, Te Kao Kaitaia Kaio and Kaikohe. Just while we're in the mood of giving, ours is only small. But you know what they say about the writing? Writing, every word that you take will be written in your book. Anyone else got a present? <laughs> Our most northern church in the conference, Takao. Please come forward. Hi, Tim. Just as our, uh, our folk are making their way down, and as you can see, no, we don't have this many members in Tokol, but as, uh, as Micah said, we're one family, and we all can fuck a papa to a podi, so <laughs> Can we stand on this side so Yep. Let's, let's come over this I got a phone call last week. The brother said, can you play the guitar for us for our item? So that's why us as Kaik, we didn't prepare one. We thought this was going to be our item. And um, the song is, take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then where'er you go. Take the name of Jesus ever as a shield from every snare. If temptations round you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. Oh, the precious name of Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy. When his loving arms receive us and his songs our tongues employ. At the name of Jesus bowing, falling prostrate at his feet, King of kings of heaven will crown him when our journey is complete. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven, precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. And this is also our practice. <laughs> Thank you. 
Matua e Frank, ito horanga tere Ellen nga mihi e mihi aloha ki a kora mo a koutou nei mahi e wainge nui a tatu nga iwi kato o tiki o tika. Matua matua ta matua matua e menaki tiaki iroto kora iroto itona mahi ngara e heke mai ne norera huri no kiro mai tatu kato. Don't forget, Frank, you're coming to Kaitaia next Saturday. And you've got Sabbath school as well. <laughs> I think it is important for us to note today Something that I'm sure is close to the heart of every, every Kiwi. Every New Zealand Kiwi and those who serve alongside us in this country that we love, Aotearoa. That the ministry of this church, the message that God has given to each one of us, hasn't been as successful or as effective to the tangata whenua as we would like. And today is a high day. Today is a new day. Today is the beginning of a new tomorrow for our Maori people. In this country, when we see the ordination of 
one of God's finest. And I'm sure that you all join with me today in saying, Frank and Lynn, we love you very much. We love having you on our team. And we believe that God is going to use you in a mighty, mighty way. Because we've seen it already. Just through the health message, not only in the words that you speak, but in the lives that you live. Just the impact of many people that would not have been reached in any other form of evangelism that we as a church tradi traditionally use. But you've been able to make inroads, and we praise God for that. And I challenge and ask each one of you from Takao, Kaio, Kaikoi, Kai, Kaitaya, to stand together with your pastor and his wife. Stand strong, Kiakaha. Don't give up. Your people are precious. And the Lord is coming soon. And so this is our time. I'd like to extend the invitation that has been made by Pastor Frank today to somebody who is sitting here witnessing this service and God has been speaking to your heart and saying you need to step up. Why don't you speak to Dr. Lyle while, while he's here from Avondale? Talk to somebody. Share with them the dream that God has placed in your heart. And whether it's full-time pastoral ministry or some other, other way that God has gifted you and you haven't yet st stepped up to the capacity and the fullness that God has called you to, that you would be reminded this afternoon to the reason why we have been called Adventists. Last message to a dying world. This is our time. I would like to thank you sincerely, churches who have been working with Pastor, to, uh, Pastor Tor and Lynn. Thank you very much for all that you have done. And I'd like to thank you all churches here in Northern for ga gathering here and spending Sabbath together for this year's regional and for everybody that's made it a, a success. And it truly has been a great day. And again, we'd like to thank Whangarei Church for hosting us here and taking good care of us. And once again, we've had more food than we could uh, eat. And believe me, we can eat. <laughs> Pastor Jerry has just reminded me of an illness that touches all of us. And Julie Oliver is the wife of our division president, Pastor Barry Oliver. And just last week, she was admitted to hospital with acute leukemia. Pastor Jerry, is there any update? Maybe you could just share with us. Thanks. Um, yeah, I spoke with uh, uh, Barry last night. Most of us know him as Barry, a humble leader. And uh, he had just hopped on the train. Uh, Julie is in North Shore Hospital where they have the very best facilities to treat this type of leukemia. Uh, and uh, he had just left her. She has just completed her first week. Um, it is acute leukaemia, and so she is being, um, to put it in man's terms, she's being hit with all they possibly can at this stage, and she's going to be there for quite a number of weeks. Uh, but uh, he said she is in very good spirits, and uh, they have just been overwhelmed by the prayer and uh, yeah, the, the texts and emails and communication uh, that have come in. So um, yeah, that's the latest. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. And I'm sure there are many other requests that we know of, but let's continue to come to the Lord in prayer that God would bless and heal uh, those who are undergoing our sickness at this time.
I'd like to thank everybody that has made this day a success. I'd like to thank all of those involved with children's ministries this morning during Sabbath school and was able to get around to visit some of you. And I'd like to, to thank you again for what you uh, have done today and continually do in your churches each and every Sabbath. Thank you very much. Thank you to the churches involved in worship uh, this, this morning and who, have, who led out. And pray that God will bless you. And also would like to, again, as I mentioned earlier, thank those who prepared and worked hard to give us such a, a great lunch. And I would like to thank everyone involved in our service this afternoon. I'm sure you would join with me in just thanking again Dr. Dr. Kendra, that message that we were blessed with this morning. And pray that God would bless your ministry as you return back to Avondale College and back to the States and, and the work that you are involved with there. And thank you also to, and you may not know some of the ministers that are here with her today. Um, uh, Sarah is one of our pastors in the Cook Islands, a graduate of Avondale College, and she's here at the moment. We also have Cecile from French Polynesia, from Tahiti. And she is also thinking of ministry at the moment and is part of our team in the office there. And we also have Maheata, who is the uh, administration assistant for the union. And she joins with us here today as well. And we just want to let you know who these good people are and, and acknowledge them. I would like to just also thank Pastor Ken, Pastor Lyle, Pastor Ben for the message today. And also Pastor Jerry. Many of you know Jerry. Uh, he was conference president here. And uh, we don't get to see him as often. Uh, he has to fly off tomorrow morning to uh, Tahiti for a week. Such a hard job. <laughs> but uh, they have been ver working very hard. Uh, in the process of moving uh, French Polynesia from a mission to conference status, and that is almost at completion stage, and it's been quite a task that uh, he's undertaken, including many other roles that he is uh, responsible for, as you know. We haven't had Pastor Paul Rakin up the front today, but you've heard a lot about CHIP. Many of you are chipping, and we just wanted to just uh, make sure you know that he's here in case you are thinking of CHIP, um, those of us who are still eating chips. Um, <laughs> Gary, where's Gary? Thank you very much for all the work uh, you've done with coordinating today and make sure, making sure everything has worked well. Gary, is there anybody that I have forgotten that we need to acknowledge and remember? Our musicians this morning, getting... Uh... Yeah, yes, no, fantastic. Let's stand together and pray and just ask God's blessing as we leave today. Before I pray, I share with you the words of this hymn. Rise up, O, o men of God, his kingdom tarries long. Bring in the day of brotherhood and end the night of wrong. Let women all rise up, have done with lesser things. Give heart and soul and mind and strength to serve the king of kings. Rise up, courageous youth, the church of you doth wait. Her strength unequal to her task, rise up and make her great. Lift high the cross of Christ, tread where his feet have trod. Disciples of the Son of Man, rise up, O Church of God. We give our lives to you again, dear Lord, and thank you for this Sabbath rest. And pray that you would walk with us into the new week and to the challenges that await. May we always remember that just as you said to the son of that woman on that day by the dusty road, rise up. You call each one of us again today to new life in your service. And we thank you for that wonderful privilege. So all these things we say and we give to you again in Jesus' almighty and wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah.